A few weeks ago, I stumbled upon a blog post authored by Jeremy Young titled Interviewing Graphics Programmers. In it, he went over four distinct categories of graphics roles and outlined the kinds of questions one might encounter during an interview. One particular question that caught my attention goes as follows. How do you write a shader that produces a checkerboard pattern? In this video, we'll go over the solution to this interview question and also learn about an important technique called domain repetition. A simple approach may look something like this. You start off by setting up the UV coordinates in the shader. Then you use the sine distance function of a box to display the square at the center of the screen. After that, you use a nested for loop to construct a grid of squares. And finally, you alternate the square's color to be black or white based on their position. And that's the algorithm in a nutshell. The problem with this approach, however, is that it's too slow. Every pixel runs the nested for loop, and as you increase the size of your checkerboard, the shader slows down more and more. To keep the performance in check, we need to use a technique called domain repetition. We start off by setting up the UV coordinates in our shader. This time, we multiply the UV coordinates by the number of rows or columns in the checkerboard. Then, we can pass the resulting color through a fract function to repeat the domain from 0 to 1 multiple times hence the name domain repetition. We can color each square black or white based on the sum of the x and y values of each square's ID. The new approach is more performant because the algorithm's time complexity remains the same even as the size of the checkerboard is increased. Now that we have a basic understanding of the more optimal solution, let's take a look at how we can implement it in GLSL. Note that the only thing that you need to set in a GLSL shader is the gl underscore frag color variable. You can set it up at the end and that's what I've done here. And I've currently set the color to be black. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do as always is set up our UV coordinates. It's just a simple way to change the domain of our x and y coordinates. So now we're going from negative one to one in the x direction and negative one to one in the y direction. The next step is to set up the board. In order to do that, we're going to create a board size variable and set that equal to four. We're going to multiply our UV coordinates by four. What this means is instead of going from zero to one and zero to negative one on the x here, it's gonna go from zero to four and zero to negative four on X and same for Y. So if I save that, you'll see here that we get a value like this. The next step is to set up the grid UVs. Here, we're going to take the fract of the UV coordinates. What that means is instead of going from zero to four, it's gonna go from zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, and same in the Y axis, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, and so on and so forth. So if I save this, you'll see that we get our grid-like pattern out of the box without having to do a nested for loop. Now, the next thing that we also wanna do is keep track of the grid IDs. We're gonna use these IDs to determine um, you know, what color the specific grid should be. The grid ID takes the floor of the UV coordinates. So if I save this, you'll see that we get a color that looks something like this. And now it's kind of hard to visualize what a grid ID actually does. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.2 and hopefully explain it a little bit better. What the grid ID does is it floors the values from zero to uh, four. So basically everything inside of here is gonna get the grid ID of zero, zero. Everything inside of this uh, square right over here is gonna get the grid ID of one zero. Everything inside of this square is gonna get the grid ID of one one. This is gonna be two two. This is gonna be one two. And so with that in mind, it's actually pretty straightforward to set up our um, checkerboard-like pattern. What we're gonna wanna do is uh, take the modulo of the grid ID X plus the grid ID Y. And we're gonna wanna do a modulo on this with the value two. And as, as long as that's close to zero, you could just do 0, 0.0 like this. Anyway, um, we're going to want to take the mod of this. And if, if this is equal to zero, we set it to white. If it's not, then we set it to black. And if I save that, we get our grid pattern. And this is without using a nested for loop. So it is actually pretty performant. We can quickly change the size of this to be on 100. And that is just as performant as when it was four. And that is just as performant as when it was 10. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to solve the checkerboard interview question and how using a technique like domain repetition can help speed up your code. 
If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.